In this video, we're going to see how to set up Kafka in our existing Maven project. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is I, I can go out to the internet and I can look for dependencies that are required for a pom.xml, but for Spring specifically, it's easy enough just to go to initializer and say, okay, what dependencies do we want? Well, Kafka, okay. And we'll go ahead and of these options, oh, probably the first ones are easiest. So we'll go ahead and choose that and then choose generate project. Now, when the project generates, I go ahead and I open it. And then I just jump into the POM file and I look for the Kafka specific settings here. So I'll see a couple. Uh, there's one for Spring Kafka and then one with the test scope as well. There's one in between those that I don't need because it's not directly related. But what I'm going to do is copy these. Then I'm going to go into my Eclipse project and I'll add my dependencies. We'll add them towards the bottom of our dependency section. And I need to do a little bit of formatting here because of course it's not very pretty. And also take out the uh, dependency, the Spring Boot Starter Test. I already have that one, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that from this file. And then do a little bit of auto formatting as well. It looks like I have a little dash there. So Control Shift F, and that makes it a little bit nicer. We can go in and we can tidy this up a little bit as well. I just make it a little neat and clean. But nonetheless, you see, okay, now I have the dependencies that I need for Kafka. So I save this and we'll double click to go back to our project. Now right click and choose Maven Update and that will pull down those dependencies. Now that we've updated our project with these Kafka dependencies, Let's make sure that the jars are actually included into our project. So I'm going to Control Shift R and I'm going to look for Photo DAO. In a previous exercise, we made this Photo DAO acquire an image from the user and then add it to an active MQ queue. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add it to a Kafka topic as well, which will be fairly straightforward. But the nice thing is we can go ahead and test out and ensure that we did get our libraries properly. So we'll say private. Kafka template, and then string, string as the generic identifiers, and then Kafka template, just like so. We'll go ahead and add an at auto wired annotation on the top as well. And let's see what it wants here. Control one, and I feel really good right now because you, you see it says import Kafka template, which indicates that it knows what this is. And sure enough, with the import, the red line goes away. We've imported it and we've confirmed that we have the right libraries. Now down on the save photo image, I'm going to say right under the JMS template, which is where we wrote to our queue, I'm going to say Kafka template, referring to the variable up above and then send and then we'll start now by sending it to this test topic that we created earlier. Probably a good idea to give it a, a, a better name at some point, but we'll go ahead and stick with that one that we know already. So test, and then we'll put the path of our photo and terminate with the semicolon and save. A few more things that we need to do before we can actually test this out. Let's go to our application.properties, and I need to add a few properties here for our Kafka template. So. I have a few important ones that I've prepared. I'm simply going to copy and paste to save us a little bit of time in the video, but nonetheless, remember you can find this source on GitHub, so uh, you can grab these and manipulate them as you wish for your own project. So with that, we've now saved. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to run this project. Simply right click on the application and say debug as, and then Java application. The application's now started. I paused the video for a moment just to run through a quick exercise to make sure that it worked. And so if you take a look, you'll see here that on our consumer, it's reading what was already on the queue, is, or sorry, on the topic, as well as a link for an image that I uploaded before. So I'm showing you this now, just so you can take a mental screen capture of this and realize the current state before we do the whole exercise together. So let's go ahead and add a latitude. We'll say 39.74, longitude minus 84.51, description, a beautiful specimen. Uh, plant name, we'll say Mahonia, aquafolium, Oregon Gray Poly. Now we'll go ahead and choose a file. We'll choose, how about Mahonia 1? Just remember that name, Mahonia 1. Open and then upload. Uh, with upload now, it's going to go ahead and hit a breakpoint that I've set. 
There we go. Uh, so uh, I'll do my best here to keep this window open. A little tricky to keep them both open on the same screen, but nonetheless, we can see it's going to step over each of these. It's going to go ahead and add to our queue. Uh, we, we can eventually remove that once we're comfortable that Kafka is working as we wish. Now we see the line has advanced to where we're adding it to our Kafka topic. So one more time, let's just take a look and confirm the current state. And now I choose F6 to step over. And let's go back and take a look again. And sure enough, we see here Mahonia 1 has been added to the topic. So uh, we see Mahonia 1 is the uh, item that we've uploaded. We have this consumer sitting here listening to that topic and sure enough there it says Mahonia 1. Now we'll go ahead and say okay thank you very much continue please. Uh, what we'll want to do next is we'll want to consume from this topic on our photo side as well on the photo resizer which will be fairly straightforward to do. The nice thing is because this is a topic and not a queue multiple items can be subscribed to this so uh, we can have our console window here we can have our photo resizer which is a separate program here on our same application the plant places post processor and we can even hook up a dashboard to this so on the consumer side on the on the photo processor I've copied over these properties from application.properties that I had in my original Plant Places application. Really, I probably only need the consumer stuff, but nonetheless, I copied everything over. I'll need to add dependencies to the POM as well. So we take a look at our dependencies. We need to just borrow some dependencies from the Plant Places web application, uh, the ones that represent Kafka. I'll grab those, copy those, and we'll run down to our POM for our consumer application and simply paste and save. Now let's go to our photo processor and this is the class that's just listening on what was a, a queue. Now it's going to be listening on to our Kafka topic. So I'm going to remove that annotation for the JMS listener and I'm going to add one for Kafka listener. And we'll say topics equals test can't wait to change that to be honest with you. Group ID equals, now what's our group ID? Well, let's take a look at application properties and I set mine up to be plant places. So we'll go ahead and use that and save. Now I'm in, uh, okay, so control one, let's ensure, oh, you know what? I Oh, cool, got it. Okay, got it and save. Um, I'm anticipating it's going to have a little bit of trouble with the foo and the bar and all of those things that I've added earlier. The best thing to do in that case is to uh, purge the topic or just create a new dedicated topic for this. Uh, I'm not really keen on this catch block because it does a no-no and it just does a print stack trace where it really should be logging. But nonetheless, I'm just going to go ahead and wrap, just for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and wrap the whole thing in a try catch. So when it does choke on the foo and the bar and so on and so forth, uh, it's just going to uh, catch it and then move on. So let's go ahead and start this up. I'll right click on our, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll leave the breakpoint there and I'm going to um, go to the application, right click and choose debug on this. And now, as I said, the first few ones I'm anticipating will be our foo and our bar, but take a look, there it is, there's foo. So that's kind of good news really, because it's saying, okay, yeah, I was able to identify this Kafka topic and I'm able to consume messages off of it. So foo bar, there we go, those are just catching like so. And before long, we'll actually get to an image that we can resize. And sure enough, here's an image that we can resize. This is our Mahonia 4. And so I'll zoom up on this and we will F8, F8, F8. And it gets down to the point where it's going to resize it as a thumbnail. And uh, we'll take a look at the path here. Go ahead and grab this path. So it's going to resize it as a thumbnail. I choose F8. And it appears to be happy with that. Now that was the first image that I set through, the test image. Uh, this one is likely the image that we did together. So I choose F8 on this. It runs to my next breakpoint. And this is Mahonia 1, which is, sure enough, the image that we did together. So I choose F8, which tells it, yeah, go ahead and continue with that.
Now let's take a look in this thumbnails directory, which is where it deposits the resized images, and take a look. Mahonia 1 and Mahonia 4. So April 19th at 8.39 p.m. and 8.38 p.m. If you take a look down here, that's just about where we are. It's April 19th, and at the time I'm uh, capturing this, it's 8.42, so just a few minutes after that. So sure enough, it was able to resize these images by grabbing the image path off of our Kafka topic. Now, remember for a queue traditionally, when it grabs something off of the queue, uh, that's now gone from the queue. But for a topic, we can have multiple consumers. So I will go ahead and kill this consumer that I have in the, uh, in the command window here. And then I'm going to start it again. And when I start it again, what we'll notice, I'll give it just a moment, what we'll notice is that it still has everything on the topic even though our application has gone through and has consumed Mahonia 1 and Mahonia 4 those items still do exist on the topic for others to consume so good thing from here is to make another consumer and we'll take a look at that in our next video i thank you for watching and i look forward to reading your comments thanks